Some of you have probably already heard about virtual reality or VR, right? Maybe you were lucky enough to get a demo yourself and look like uh, this guy up here. It's like that face of awe, that childlike wonder, right? Maybe you saw an article or a video on the internet. Uh, maybe you had a wild-eyed friend that after demoing, they came to you and pleaded with you to try this experience that was so exciting and so amazing. That person was right. It is an exciting and amazing industry. I've been one of those wild-eyed people for several years now. Um, and in this resurgence of virtual reality, it's getting so much attention, and according to who you talk to, this might be the fourth time around, right? Uh, but it is a new horizon we've been trying to break for quite some time. Ever since we've been able to get computers to draw on screens, we've then tried to get those computers to draw on the world around us, and even draw the entire simulation around us for virtual reality, right? There's a lot of exciting experiences that are already out there getting out to people. Gaming, of course, is a big space. AEC, architecture, engineering, and uh, construction is using it quite well. And sales, and cinema, lots of action. But what really captured me about this industry, what made me so excited and what's stolen the last couple of years of my life away has been shared VR, being inside of virtual reality with another person that's also in virtual reality. I was convinced from my very first time trying it. Uh, some of you or maybe your children know about the very popular online game, Minecraft. Uh, there was a mod that was put out for it to put you together with other people in VR. Uh, so I put on the headset, I look around, the graphics are really horrible, right? You look down, there's grass, there's a blue sky above, and then I hear my friend to my left. And I look to my left, and there he is. He's a rectangle with a giant cube for a head, but there he is, he's there. And I went over to him, we gathered with a group of friends, we actually stood in a circle and had this very exciting conversation about what we were working on in VR, what experiments that we were doing. And at that point, it really hit me. I stood back and realized how meaningful the conversation was for me, how valuable this experience was, and even later, I remembered it different. I didn't remember it as playing a game, I remembered it as hanging out with friends from around the world. And that is what convinced me about shared VR. And my task today, my challenge for today, is to hopefully convince you that VR is not just the next gadget, uh, the next little thing that will come along, but it's actually changing for the spectrum of hum human communication. Right? It's going to have a huge impact, I believe, so I'll try to convince you. Let's start by looking at communication itself and the progress we've made with the tools we use to communicate as human beings. Starting with the printing press, Dell newspaper in the 1600s, with audio with the telephone in the 1800s, with video with television, and each leap forward has been increasingly frequent with the web, with IM, with video chat, with social media. Before we pat ourselves on the back for making so much progress so quickly, I'd like to look at this spectrum from another lens. I'd like to compare all of this progress we've made in communication to an actual face-to-face -face chat with an actual human in real life, physically. And I think that spectrum looks a little bit like this. It looks a bit different. I, I see that there's a wide gap between even a video chat with a person around the world and being face to face with them. You've probably already experienced this. When you have a video chat, and I could be looking at you when I was talking in real life, but video chat, I'm gonna look a little past you because I'm looking at the camera or I'm making sure there's not a mustard stain on my shirt during the conversation, right? And you're looking past or away from me as well and we're losing something there. We're losing an emotional connection. And this is something that's been verified at Stanford in their virtual reality human interface lab that they saw even with abstract avatars that are not photorealistic, you get more of a human connection by simulating that eye contact than you do with a, a video chat that has higher fidelity. So my challenge here is to uh, basically convince you that VR belongs around here. That's closer to a face-to-face -face conversation than any other medium that we've used for communication in the past. So I'm gonna start by convincing you why VR's time is now. Uh, even though it may be the fourth time around, why everyone is so excited, why is there so much investment, why is there so much momentum, there's lots of reasons that I can come up with, but for me it mostly comes down to two numbers. 
20 and 1. The first number is in milliseconds. As we approach a number, get below it, we are surpassing the human perception threshold that we need to to keep a person comfortable in VR and believe that they are in a simulation. And this 20 milliseconds refers to the uh, motion to photon latency. What that term means is from the time I move my head, there's electronics that are calculating that move, sending it back through the computer and changing what I see on the display in front of me. That entire loop is happening in 20 milliseconds. It's comparable to how movies work, where you can have a sequence of pictures uh, that are very similar and you can put them in front of your face, but once you get to 24 pictures a second, you stop seeing individual pictures and you start seeing motion, you start seeing a movie, right? Similar to VR, we stop seeing uh, a simulation, we start just looking around the virtual environment and our brain sees it as the real environment that you're in. The second number, is one, is in millimeters. And this has to do with tracking. Not only tracking your head motion, uh, but also any controllers that you're using, um, even limbs, hands, at a sub-millimeter accuracy. So you have really precise and really accurate ways to interact with the world and even peek around it, right? If you have the right equipment, you can look under things and look over things in virtual reality right now. And what makes this so important now is that the technology that is able to do this is within reach of consumers. As little as five years ago, you might have had to be in a university lab to have access to tech that did this. But now we actually have smartphones that are able to hit these numbers. And it's very, very important for people around the world and how they interface with technology. So now you know, hey, we're passing the human threshold of perception. We're keeping people comfortable in VR for extended amounts of time. But what is VR adding that is so special, that's different from a video chat or a phone call? There's a few things that you're getting out of VR that are not available anywhere else. You're getting a sense of space, of your sense of your place in the virtual world. You're getting a sense of scale, of how big or small things are compared to you. You're getting a sense of depth, how far away things are from you. And you're also getting a sense of your motion. If you can look down or see your own hands moving in some cases, which is really, really neat. Now, when you add another person in virtual reality, that all transfers to, ah, that person is there in space. And they're about that tall, so that might can, you know, influence my conversation with them. And they're that close, or maybe they're too close and in my personal space, and that makes me uncomfortable. And they're moving like a human does, because of that submillimeter accuracy. Now it's easy to look past the abstraction and see that, yes, that's a live human that's behind that representation. One of the things that really convinced me that we were on the right track with shared VR, uh, and that this was a really powerful uh, moment in time, uh, was a gathering, an event that we had in virtual reality. Right, we invited about 50 people uh, that were uh, in their VR headsets from around the world. And as a part of this gathering, there was a French contingent that was coming to this event. And what was fascinating is uh, each uh, French user came in, another French avatar would come up and be like, oh, bonjour, mwah, mwah. And you see these avatars go in on each other and do this very human, very natural thing within seconds. This is their first time on the platform and within seconds they're carrying over a social norm from real life into the virtual world. And as that event wore on, as the night wore on, there was this childlike wonder as we're exploring the environment. People are sneaking up on people and whispering in their ears, oh, you know, oh my goodness, what is that, right? They're playing a little hide and seek. Uh, we're playing tag around the virtual environment, very childlike things. And then once everyone got tired of that, they broke into their different circles to have conversations, just like you would at a house party that's getting late, right? And these people actually arranged themselves in circles to have these conversations with each other. So what we had was a virtual, physical, social interaction. Where we're seeing all of these norms come over to the virtual environment almost immediately which is very, very fascinating to see. So I can talk about virtual reality until I'm blue in the face. Uh, I can try to convince you as much as I can. Your wild-eyed friend can try to convince you as much as he or she can. You can watch videos or photos. But my wish for you is that you actually give it a try, that you do not dismiss VR, and especially do not dismiss 
virtual reality with another person in VR, even though the avatars look a little cartoony, um, or the environment is a little bit abstract. Right? I'm going to steal a quip from one of my colleagues, uh, but many people know this saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. We extended that uh, to say that uh, video is worth a thousand pictures and VR is worth a thousand videos. Right? Trying to understand what VR is about and what the experience is like from a screenshot is the same as me trying to describe the grandness of an opera with Morse code. I can only do it so far before I, I just fail because it's not transferable. Virtual reality is an experiential thing, and so my wish, my challenge to you is that you try.